Shout hallelujah. Um, so today we are going to be looking into the word titled Abiding in Him. Abiding in Him. Remember, it's our it is our you know month of intimacy. Intimacy. So one of the ways to abide in God, one of the ways to get intimate with God is to constantly abide in Him. Before I have something there. Divine Encounter for Year 2021, the first edition, is scheduled to hold on the month of March 12 and 14. Praise God. And the theme is rest. I thought somebody would be excited. The Lord is promising us rest in every area of life. So as we move into the third phase of the 63 day fasting and prayer from tomorrow our prayer of demand will be focusing on so many things including God granting us rest from every pressure of life amen and the Lord Almighty would do what he wants to do in Jesus name so I want to encourage you to you know share the flyer you have it um, before the day is over share it with your friends and families if they can't come to the church they can also connect on facebook and instagram it's going to be a season of high praise prayer and prophetic utterance by the grace of god and i believe that the mystery is ready and the lord almighty would you know uh, manifest his presence in our midst in jesus name so abide in him open your bibles with us to the book of john chapter 15. john chapter 15 we're going to read verses 1 to 8. john 15 1 to 8. i am the true vine and my father is the gardener he cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit while every branch that does bear fruit it trims clean so that it will even be more fruitful you are already clean because of the word i have spoken to you verse 4 remain in me that's abide in me and i would abide in you no branch can bear fruit by itself it must abide in the vine neither can you bear fruit unless you abide in me i am the vine you are the branches if a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask whatever you wish and it will be given to you. Verse 8, the final one. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourself to be my disciples. May God bless the reading of his word in Jesus' mighty name. Abide in him. Jesus used this illustration you know of a vine and branches to describe the nature of the relationship every christian must have with god a vine is a plant and the branches are the leaves that comes from the plant so he used that powerful illustration to describe the expectation of how we must you know abide with God as his children and so when we talk about abiding what are we talking about it's talking about connectivity abiding talks about connectivity a life that is connected to God that is united with Jesus Christ a life that is completely committed to doing the will of the master in first john chapter 2 verse 6 the bible says that whosoever say he abides in him 
all to walk in the same way in which he walked. So what that is saying to you and to me is that you cannot claim to abide only on the on the you know um, on the on the lips of your mouth. You cannot only confess that you are abiding. You have to demonstrate it by the way you are connected to God. First John 2 6, whosoever says he abides in him all to walk in the same way in which he walked. And we know the way in which Jesus walked on earth. The way of holiness. The way of humility. The way of peace. The way of joy, love. So you can't claim to be abiding with God and be living in contradiction to all of these examples that Jesus Christ laid for you and late for me you have to show it in john 15 verse 4 it says that abide in me and i in you the branch cannot bear any fruit of itself so you cannot be as much fruitful as god wants you to be if you are not connected to him so connectivity is one principal thing that you have to bear in mind when you claim that you are abiding in God. What does it mean also? It means a life of dependency. A life that is completely dependent on God. You come to a, a, a situation in your life that you feel so vulnerable, so weak, so exposed anytime you sense that you are disconnected. You feel insecure. When a trace of sin creeps in, because sin separates us from God, according to the Bible. So anytime you realize that, oh, by error you've fallen into sin, that sense of insecurity should follow. That is showing that of a truth that you are dependent on God for your survival. You are dependent on him for your supplies. You are not relying on your logic, on the logic of your brain. To make decisions you are constantly consulting the holy spirit for direction so to abide in him means that you are dependent on him completely why because without him you can do nothing you read that in the scripture so a christian should never come to a point in life even if you have worked with god so long like me to seller and feel a sense of independence there is no independence from god in the life of a believer as we grow in age as we grow in our work with him we also grow in dependence to him so abiding in god is a life of dependency it's also a life of continuity a life of continuity you don't you know feel that you are bad with god only when you show up in church or only when you pick up your bible to study is a constant continuous thing that have to be in your consciousness and that has to shape every decision you take it has to shape and influence every location you find yourself every of your actions and inactions must be driven by that awareness that consciousness that you have to abide in him so to abide in god is a is a life of permanent connectivity permanent you don't connect today and disconnect tomorrow like the network we use on our phone you don't you don't behave like internet wi-fi that is so erratic it's connected this moment the next moment because of location limitation is disconnected no whether you are with within the you know cycle of brethren or you are within the circle of unbeliever your connectivity is continuous are you with me you are not only abide you are not only connecting where you are in the church or you are in the midst of born again it's continuous paul said second timothy uh, chapter 4 verse 2 he said be instant in season and out of season when it is convenient you have to be abiding 
when it's not convenient, you also do what? You remain abiding. When it is easy to stay abide, you do it. When it's not easy to stay abide, you also do it. It has to be continuous. You remain connected when it is convenient, when it is not convenient. That is the way to abide. And in summary, when you put it together, so to abide means that you, you, you remain united with Jesus and you rely on Jesus and you remain in Jesus. That is how to put it together. Connectivity, dependency, and continuity. That is the way to abide. I pray the Lord will help you and me to keep abiding in Jesus' name. There are so many confusion out there regarding what abiding in Jesus, abiding in God means. There are so many illusions, so many myths. Some would say that, oh, to abide is, 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 is different from being born again. Big lie. Big lie. They tend to separate a life that abides from God, I mean with God, from a life that has been saved and washed by the blood of Jesus. It's a total confusion. Don't give yourself to that lie. It's an illusion. The moment you are born again, God expects that new journey to follow an abiding lifestyle. Some school of thought will tell you that to abide is... Is, is a state of Christian maturity that you attain after being born again. It's a lie. It is nothing for you to aspire to reach or to get to post salvation. It comes together with expectation of God the moment you give your life to Christ. What am I saying? Second Corinthians chapter 15, verse 7. He says, if anyone is in Christ, is a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. All things are become new. And I think this, this, this gives a better understanding of what we're saying. The moment you make a decision for God, you are dead to sin instantly. That is the expectation of God. Because you are buried with God, with Christ. And the expectation is that you are rising up again into a new life. That is the summary of that 2 Corinthians 5 7. That's the summary. If you see this plant that we talk about here, the small plant there, at the point of it's been a seed illustrate a time when a an individual surrender his life to Christ it becomes a seed that is sown unto God and the moment is growing is growing with plants no no so it's growing with branches no tree grows alone remaining tree is that correct as it's growing the branches are coming as part of the growth am i making sense to somebody as the as the plant is growing it's not just bringing up tree alone it's growing alongside with branches now the branches grow in commensurate to the growth of the plant that is the concept of abiding the moment you give your life to jesus the next moment, that same moment, you remain in him. You remain in him. You stay connected. You remain in him through your dependency on him. You remain in him through your decision to remain there forever. And as you keep growing, then God grows you into maturity. And I think the book of Romans chapter 6 verses 1 to 11 gives it a better understanding. The summary of that in, in verse 11, Romans 6, 11, it says that count yourself dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. So you, you are dead to sin this moment, that same moment you are alive to Jesus in his righteousness. 
and you remain there that is the concept of abiding in reality so how do you abide in him how do i abide in him how do we do that i'm sure we all have answers to that through our obedience continuously a life of holiness a life of obedience even when it's difficult to obey there are times when it's tough to obey the scripture no doubt but your decision to not look back look at Stephen Stephen has not gone so far you know in his Christian journey he met the likes of Peter he met the likes of John James just a young convert appointed a deacon and the next moment because of his zeal he became the prime object of persecution did he go back he did not go back that is the way to abide you get to a point where you are resolute in your mind that come rain come sun come winter come summer it is god and god alone obedience holiness believing in the word of god another way that you can abide you believe in his word many a times the scripture appears to not make sense with the reality of our world you still obey you obey the word of god without any trace of rationalization without any any sense of logic all your senses are connected to the inspiration of the holy spirit to be able to make the right interpretation of what the scripture is asking you to do that is the way to abide that is how to abide you rely on the holy spirit of god to completely influence everything you do your decision your actions your preferences your thought process you look at everything it has to be driven by holy spirit you don't even make decision on a job offer based on which one is paying more as a child of god i hope i'm talking to somebody you don't make a decision of where to where to settle down on the basis of economic indices alone without confirming where god wants you to be you are completely influenced by holy spirit when you are convinced that holy spirit is leading you to help a stranger you don't imagine the risk involved you go ahead and do it many christians have have I've been hiding under that oh it's a stranger i don't want to put myself in risk but what is the holy spirit saying we learn from this Sunday school today rahab entertained as strangers and she had her name listed as the heroine of faith so the unbeliever should not outshine you they should not outperform me and you when it comes to obeying the voice of God how do you abide you abide through prayers this world we live is tough extremely tough that you can't survive alone except God is giving you strength and is increasing his grace I remember when I was still very young you know um, convert maybe just like a year old or so on campus and we went to a youth conference oh i enjoyed that experience when the conference was done i told the youth pastor i said is it possible that we extend this conference he said why he said i, I said because it was easy to keep to god's law in this place and the guy told me very good friend he said your your, your the test of your faith is not here it is outside it's on campus it's in your class when those girls come around hey i said this guy he nailed it so there is pressure in the world but prayers help you to prevail that is how to abide because when you are praying to God you are showing him that you are dependent on him for strength for survival so for supplies for help for direction that's what you do in prayers how do you abide you abide 
through your faith. Many a times it doesn't make sense, you know, to, to guide and do what the scripture is leading you to do. That's where your faith comes in. As long as it is written in the word of God, it is confirmed in the Holy Spirit. You can be sure you can't, you, you can't make mistake. That is how to abide. And anytime you decide or you, 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 you make a resolution to abide with God, like I said, it's not a one-time experience. It's a lifetime activity. It's a lifetime engagement. So it's not what you do now and you don't do tomorrow. Permanence, continuity. As you make up your mind to abide in Him, you can be sure of so many benefits. So many so many and one of those benefits is that you have god abiding in you also it's a symbiotic relationship you are not in it alone you are not the only one doing it you abide in him he also abides in you john chapter 15 verse 4 confirms that to us abide in me and i in you so the easiest way to carry the almighty god in your system in your mind in your heart is a life of simple obedience a life that is that has decided to abide in him at that point you are a god carrier anywhere you are you can be sure that jesus is there with you you are not alone and you can't have jesus in you and be scared of the threat of man why the bible tells us christ in me the hope of glory colossians chapter 1 verse 27 christ in you the hope of glory you can't be a god carrier you can't be a carrier of jesus christ and that boss in the office is threatening you with a sack letter it doesn't it doesn't i mean it doesn't match it doesn't compare you can't be a God carrier and be scared of the threat of principality and power. You can't be. You can't be. The Bible tells us that we are complete in Him who is the head of principality and power. So it doesn't matter, you know, their rank in their confraternity. They are still coming behind God. They are walking in the permissive power that Jesus allows them to use. And you can't stay connected with Jesus and be scared of them. You can't be. So one important benefit of abiding in Him is that you have Him also. I remember when I was finishing my youth service several years ago. You want to know the year? I can share if you want. And they were begging me to stay back, you know, in a place of my primary assignment. What was I doing? I was teaching. I looked at that village. If I stay here, then I'm done. <laughs> I told the HOD, I said, oh, sorry, I would have loved to stay. I love these children. But the gates of Lagos is awaiting my return because I have something big waiting for me. What was my comfort? It was God. God was my confidence, nothing else, no connection, nothing. But did God fail me? No, it did not fail. God showed up, even when my peers are still trying to find their feet. God said to me, Big. First job ever in life, big. So, what am I trying to say with that with that story? When you abide truly in God, you can commit God, and God will show up. You can commit God. Because at that point in time, your intimacy will have transcended beyond God and subject relationship to father and son relationship. The Lord will increase your understanding in the mighty name of Jesus. One other benefit when you abide with God, when you abide in God, is that there is a level of growth in your knowledge and revelation of Jesus. You know him specially. 
to know him in a different way that people who are just you know hanging on on christianity by claim you have a convincing assurance of a better knowledge of what god is to you the book of luke chapter 24 verses 13 to 31 it tells a story after jesus has been crucified and buried the bible says in that book of luke 24 it said two disciples were walking they were walking to their village a village called emails and they were discussing on what has happened in the land how jesus has been you know they, they were expressing disappointment they were conversing and jesus appeared to them and joined them in the conversation oh what are you guys talking about and they said to jesus oh are you are you the only stranger in this land that did not know what has happened in the last three days and jesus told them oh this has been written in the scripture from by, by different prophets and all of that and jesus was about to you know depart from them and they told jesus can you please abide with us because night has come stay with us for the night and jesus agreed jesus agreed so as they were having dinner the bible says in verse 31 luke 24 31 it said their eyes were open and they knew him and they knew him so imagine if they have ended the conversation on the street and say oh thank you bye bye thanks for sharing your knowledge bye see you again but the, the their decision to offer him a space in their home for a deeper fellowship gave them the privilege to know and to recognize that it was jesus they have been talking to all along so there's a level that you abide with god that god reveals himself to you in a scripture just to commune with god and to have a deep revelation from the written word and you are there hours you have no sermon you are preparing for you are just there fellowshipping it's a level of abiding that you have to walk into consciously to see god manifesting for you the lord will take you there nobody's saying amen are we angry the lord will take me there i'm not i'm not always there i'm not also there i'm also a work in progress so don't see a superman in me but that is what god is calling us to at this point he's calling us to come up higher with him that is the way to fly that is the way to fly that you can put god as a priority in all of your busy schedule but what do we do we list our to do if you are organized one two three four five six and then the last one is the god item that is not the way to abide those who truly abide prioritize the kingdom business over everything they do the lord will help you to be committed when you abide you have a benefit to bounce back when things go wrong you have a grace that is reserved for you to come back strong when sin comes in by error you know we are human beings and god knows that we are human beings god knows that we are not superman you know that there are occasions where things go wrong not by willful intention but just by circumstantial reason or whatsoever god knows but if god has you know confirmed that you are truly an abiding child the grace that found you at first that grace can also restore you i thought somebody would say amen to that the grace that found you that grace can also restore you when things go wrong and I will give you a perfect example in the life of Peter and Judas Iscariot. You know, Peter, when Jesus asked his disciple, who the people say I am, he was bold and confident to say, oh, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. 
And Jesus confirmed that no flesh and blood has told him that. But his father in heaven. But how so that is the Peter that sees Jesus as a savior, a messiah. But look at Jesus Iscariot. Matthew chapter 26, verse 22. When Jesus was telling them, Oh, one of you will betray me and sell me out. Every of the disciples were asking, Lord, is it me? Lord, is it me? How to betray the Lord Savior? Somebody was making commitment and putting his life on the line. And somebody was busy strategizing how to finish the assignment to sell him out. You can see a parallel character between the two of them. Why Peter was busy with Jesus to advance the cause of the gospel, visiting people from house to house, healing and evangelizing. Judas was busy stealing in the treasury. He was busy stealing. So it became easy for God, and that is the summary, it became easy for God to restore Peter when he denied Jesus. Why? Because God saw in him, he has always been an abiding son. But for Judas, there was no trace of ever abiding. So that grace that included him among the twelve could not fetch him back for restoration. It was easy for Peter to be restored. Why? Because it was just a momentary witness. Are you, are you getting me? So when you abide in God, you have that grace to bounce back when things go wrong. I'm be clear-minded. It is not a license to keep falling on the same scene. Peter did not deny Jesus two times. A caveat, so be aware. So when you abide with God, you also have an all-round fruitfulness. All-round fruitfulness. And that is a big benefit that you cannot do away with. The entire scripture of John chapter 15, verses 1 to 8 that we read, talks about fruitfulness. Without me, you can do nothing. Abide in me so that you can bear more fruit. It centers around fruitfulness. And the desire of God for you and for me is to be fruitful in every dimension of life. Not just the fruit of the womb. God expects you to be fruitful with your mouth. Proverbs chapter, chapter 18 verse 21. Verse 20 to 21. He said a man's stomach shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. And with the produce of his lips shall he be lifted. So there is a lifting. There is a promotion that the fruit of your mouth can bring to you. The likes of John Maxwell are excelling in this area of fruit because just one speech, they earn thousands of dollars. We are asked to see Christians today busy around with making justice that have no value, killing the fruit of their womb. In the midst of those who pock, no, that's where you find them. In the camp of those who backbite, that's where you find them. But we are asked that other Christians who are abiding, who are excelling in the fruit of their mouth, the fruit of a man's mouth shall satisfy him, and the produce of his lips shall get him lifted. Proverbs 18, 20 to 21. God expects you to be fruitful with your hands. With your hands, he is expecting fruitfulness. Proverbs 31, 31. When scripture was describing the the virtuous woman, what was it told us? Proverbs 31 31. He said, Give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own work place her in the gate. So there's a level of touch that you give the same thing that people are touching, the same project that people are struggling. When it comes to your turn, your men having contact with that project because your hands are fruitful. Successes are recorded astronomically. That's an example of fruit of the hand. To lay those hands for people to step in for lifting, that is how to be fruitful with your hands. 
and you can't readily do this in this wicked world except you abide genuinely in God and when you abide in him it becomes easy for you to be fruitful God is also expecting you I'm rushing now perseverance you are quick to give up on God just at the slightest sign of failure hey you are lacking that perseverance that long suffering that God is expecting you to have so you must be fruitful and the way to be fruitful is the way to stay abiding the Lord will help you let's be on our feet as we pray our time is past spent I have to stop you know that your single prayer point you really want to abide you want to grow in Christ but there are there are weights of sin of destruction that easily besets Hebrews chapter 12 where so we are surrounded by so great cloud of witnesses let us lay aside those sin those weight that set us back cry to God every besetting weight on my decision to abide Lord take them away pray to God a few minutes Lord take them away this is the Liberty Assembly raising a glorious generation